And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Like, there's a guy, and he's, he's like, oh, I'm Australian. No, wait, that's Jason Statham. It's like, a, <laughs> I'm Australian, and I'll, I'll hit you if you have an affair. That's British. Um, so there's an Australian guy. He's you know, Steve, if this beer bottle was made of sugar, it smashed over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Is It A Bicycle, Season 8, Episode 12, the original and bestest ever TV and movie podcast. My name is Stephen Wrigley and I'll be your host for this evening. Uh, beside me have a man who says you can tell a lot about a woman by the way she cuts her brake lines. It's Mike <laughs> McDonough. McDonough. <laughs> also beside me is a lady who this week said, if you ever see a woman crying, never ask her, is this because of her hair? It's Shona <laughs> O'Farty. Live from Vegas, we have a man who says the hardest part of the job interview is knowing the best moment to lean in for the kiss. It's Sean. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we hope to discuss some movies in the shape of Kill Me Three Times and The Water Diviner, and some TV in the form of The Returned. We'll also have some news and some previews and come to a bicycle near you. How are you doing? How's Hi everyone? Guys. Fantastic, Steve. Welcome back, Shona. Grand. After your what, minor sabbatical? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wrote a book. <laughs> I didn't write a book. Yeah, it, it's great to be back too, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. We, d- we didn't miss you though. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> when you're as pretty as Mike, you don't need to make friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since you're off, uh, I presume you've seen lots of uh, TV and movies. Yes, I've been in my sick bed. So give us a rundown there. Yeah, well, I got to make my way through uh, Netflix as I normally do. So um, all of Netflix. All of it. Yeah, I've seen everything on Netflix now. I'm a, I'm a library of useless information. Uh, specifically, the two things I watched. Um, I saw a documentary called Psalm on Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's um, and do it sommeliers. Yes, sommeliers. <laughs> As it is. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's um, a documentary that came out in 2012, uh, directed by Jason Wise, and it's about four American sommeliers who are studying for the. Um, master sommelier exam, but the thing about this exam is that it's practically impossible to pass. Okay. So you see these guys studying for tests that are impossible. It's kind of like what you'd see in movies that almost spoof sommeliers. Like they take a sip of the wine and they're like, tastes like tennis ball, a bit of <laughs> new, n- new hose, new garden hose. Uh, there's some freshly cut grass and citrus undertones. There's, and they just start listing all this crazy shit. And then, uh, they they go through this list where they're just like, uh, this is uh, a dry wine. It has a high, I don't know, verbosity. I'm making up words because I'm not a fucking sommelier. Um, but they just spit all this stuff out. And then at the end of it all, they're like, I believe that this is a, you know, Chateau de blah, blah, blah from the, uh, I don't know, California region. This is from specifically Napa Valley, from mm-hmm. specifically this wine house uh, from this year. And then they name a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. And... In this master exam, they're given three whites and three reds, and they have to name like the wine that they're drinking. It is crazy. No way. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and there's el- other elements to the exam, but it shows them studying, which is basically it's five guys sitting around a kitchen table, kind of like post-college age. I mean, they're young enough. Uh, and they're taking the piss out of each other like you know guys would that age, except for their version of hanging out is... um taking turns taking sips of wine and then doing the sommelier thing of being like this is a grainy wine that tastes like rotting animal carcass and tennis balls nerds, uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> nerds. It's, i'm really interested in things about tests that just seem crazy to take i remember there was this documentary about um french i don't know if you call them pastry chefs but they're like sugar artists mm-hmm. um and they have to do all these crazy sugar I don't know, things, they get tested. And I remember this one movie, the the guy, the chef is taking his creation over to the table to be judged and drops it. Oh. Yeah, and I still think of the pain in his face and in my body oh, God. when I saw that drop. So this is kind of in the same line of like crazy shit I could never do. Right. <laughs> you should just stick to like general knowledge <laughs> tests, yeah, you exactly. know, or even HIV tests. Yeah. <laughs> easier, much easier. Do, yeah. Like, yeah, stick to the pub quizzes. Yeah. Um, but it's a really interesting documentary anyway, so I, I thought that was good fun. And then uh, just to balance that out, I watched 22 Jump Street, which I missed when it was out um, in cinemas. Oh, brilliant. So. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Furthered your education then. <laughs> 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 in, 
case I had learned something, yeah. I yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure yeah, I yeah, done gotta, myself. You gotta right have back balance down. in life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I loved uh, 21 Jump Street. It was kind of, it exceeded my expectations. It was funnier than I thought. Um, and 22 Jump Street, you know, makes the same riffs about, you know, the joke is that is that their mission is the exact same mission, you know, very self-aware of the fact. They're just repeating the success yeah. of 21 Jump Street. Um, and I, I just continue to be impressed by Channing Tatum. I think, he, you know, he's surprising me by... Uh, is that by the buffer he gets or the, <laughs> the roles he gets? Surprisingly, I think he's just g- good at acting, no, which really? I kind of want to write him off yeah. as being useless, but uh, he's not. He's good in the movie. I don't Have you guys seen 22 Jump Street? We had a look yes. at it last year, yeah. 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 I think it was last year, yeah. 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 Did yeah. you like it? I think I shot in it from a height. But <laughs> the other guys liked it. <laughs> Pretty much everything. That sounds about like yeah. <laughs> Um, can I ask, did you get a chance to see Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Shona? Oh, I've seen the whole season, yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah I figured, yeah. 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 I just wanted to get someone else to weigh in on, on, on whether or not I'm uh, correct. I mean, whether or not they liked it and whether or not <laughs> it was amazing. Do you like it? I loved it. I watched every episode over the course of maybe three days. Yeah. I um... He wasn't even sick. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> yeah, I was watching. I found myself watching an episode or two a day, and um, I like to watch this kind of thing just before I go to bed. I like to have like a comedy series I'd watch um, fairly frequently. And I think Kimmy Schmidt's just, it's funny, but it's not too saccharine. Uh, you can see some of the Tina Fey humor in it. Um, the cameos by Tina Fey you know, as, as a useless lawyer in love, in, in love with her co counsel uh, was a good, um, I don't know. I, yeah, I thought it wasn't, I mean, it's not, it's not earth shattering. It's not gonna, you know, change the way TV's made, but, um, I thought it was good. A little boring at times. I'm kind of curious to see. It's gonna need to go somewhere new, I think, for season two, but, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the first season and I'll watch the second, if there is one. Yeah, cool. Um, you happy now, Sean? You're right, Sean. I, I'm a little bit happy. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I could be more happy. <laughs> That's not that much happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the wrong kind of happy one. Anyway, um, so I Zombie, who saw that this week? I accidentally did because somebody put it on the list and then took it off. Oh, did they? Well, I think they did. <laughs> well, tell no, us about Mike, it. I think you just weren't paying attention. <laughs> 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 but tell us about it anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a girl who gets sort of bitten. By Scratched. a zombie? Scratched, Scratched yeah. 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 So it's sort of semi-infected, yeah. whereby she uh, yeah. needs to eat brains, but doesn't fi- kind of fully turn into a zombie. Yeah, she's kind of fine with the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a human with a taste for brains. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, But she looks kind of emo gothy. Yeah, her hair yeah. strangely turns from brown to blonde. Black. Oh, which way did she go? Oh, her face went blonde. That was it. Yeah. 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 Her <laughs> face went blonde. <laughs> That's went not a thing. Really, really, really yeah, white. Yeah. She she did the whole um, uh, Beetlejuice thing on it, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. got really pale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was quite funny. There's one scene where she's uh, she's buying loads and loads of uh, uh, face color. Um, oh, tanning. Tanning. <laughs> tanning. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like everything. Beep, yeah. beep, tanning, beep, tanning. <laughs> it's quite funny, all right. Yeah. So um, uh, it's a good take on it. I mean, it's a humorous take on it. It's not a, a zombie thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, say. really? Okay. It's, it's more of a detective series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Because uh, she's working in a coroner. She was like a medical. Was she a student or what was she? She was a doctor. A oh, doctor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she uh, moves to be a coroner after this mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. Huh. Better um, access to brains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she she kind of the chow- dead aren't going to miss them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she kind of chows down on them now and again. Oh God. Sly, yeah. yeah. So um, she mixes them with pasta and stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny. It's quite funny. <laughs> Actually, that was, that was grosser than any uh, <laughs> thing I'd seen in previous zombie movies. Really, you know. But because uh, she was just so like, yeah, it's just cavalier like, about it's it. It's just like noodles, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> You know, like prawns and noodles, yeah. you know, that kind of way. Hot sauce. But, uh, just so you know, you've ruined prawns for me now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the the thing is, no, she inherits some of the memories of the person, hmm. of, of the okay. brain, right? So she sees uh, what uh, the whole premise of the thing is that she's going to be investigating uh, who murdered them and helping the detective. Oh, okay. Kind of thing, right? By eating their brain. Yeah. Uh, okay. But it's a... Uh, the, the great thing about this show, I thought, apart from the sort of the the fell humor in it, mm. is uh, that they went straight to the point. They went, "Here's how it is." Like mm. the first scene, they yeah. just went, 
here's your man, she's just going to eat brain, she's a zombie, she's going to do blah, blah, blah. And then, <laughs> and they just told you everything, and here's the detectives. And then they went back and sort of went, well, actually, here's how it kind of happened. Okay. Right, so you've, you've no sort of, you know, you're not being drawn along. And so it's kind of like the Shakespearean the approach of like, let's start with an overview of everything. Yeah, pretty And then much. we'll tell the story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, that was kind of fresh, let's say, for, I don't know, this kind of TV. Yeah. You know, so. so they've just set it up as a procedural cop show. Yeah. As such. Huh. With, with the interesting with, twist that she's a zombie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eating brains to solve crimes. It's kind of not unlike elementary in a lot of mm. ways. Yeah. yeah. Right. Christopher Walken yeah. Dead Zone. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes would on an occasion like just have a quick bite yeah. just figure it out you know taste wise <laughs> very cute uh, sense of that man uh, that very cute that wasn't the context mm-hmm. I was speaking in but yeah <laughs> um, no there's, there's like a guy and a girl and they have have this detective mm-hmm. who looks very like the detective in uh, elementary actually mm-hmm. uh, so yeah and their, their interaction is quite similar too mm-hmm. so um, yeah I, I'd say give it a look give it a look mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Um, cool. Six Nations. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Up Ireland. That's right. Which are we going to talk about first? Uh, we can do chronological order. Just, to the, whole, just okay. to the whole day. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So tell us, what was the? give us the story, because there, there was quite a lot of drama in yeah, this day. Yeah, yeah. So what's the background? Um, John? For people who uh, might be American, um, what are you, what do you mean, Six Nations? Is this a oh, political group? This is, this what, what are I'm you ho- talking this about? Is, this is what I'm hoping Michael uh, okay. <laughs> impart to us. <laughs> six Nations is a, a rugby tournament which is played every year between uh, the six best European rugby nations. And this year, it turned out there was three teams that had a good shot of winning it. But they coming all, into the last day of yeah, games. coming into the last day, and the three games were played sequentially, and. Basically, all the three teams had to score a ridiculous amount of points if they were going to have a decent shot at winning the title. So they systematically went about scoring a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of points. <laughs> like if you if you put a euro on to forecast those scores, you'd you'd be a mi- millionaire <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the bookies by the end of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just a, a crescendo of drama. You know, it really was. Uh, like it was seven hours. It was basically like. Taking three of your favorite Super Bowls and putting them all in one day. Yeah, back to back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and the result of the second and third one uh, uh, all was... Like, yeah, they all influenced each influenced other. Influenced each other, yeah. 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 And the, the amazing thing about it was it was still undecided up until the very last kick, of the very last minute of the very yeah. last game. It was just shockingly emotional to watch. I was having a heart attack. Yeah. I had oh, really? to kind of, I had to keep leaving the room just because it was so intense because of course we had Italy and where mm. no was it Wales that were Yeah, Wales Italy? and Italy. Yeah. yeah, it was the first match and Wales was still in the running to be a potential winner but they had to win by a lot. But then Italy had a horrible game so Wales won by a lot. So you're thinking okay, Ireland in order to win the next game you need to beat uh, Scotland, Scotland by, by twenty six. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty six points. A lot more than we ever really do. Beat yeah, them. yeah, a yeah. lot of points. So you know, you finish the first game, you're like, oh, that, geez, that's a lot for Ireland to take on. And then you go into the second game, and you know, Ireland play a fantastic game, and yeah. they win by twenty. 26, wasn't it? Was it 26? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. they had to get 21, and they, they won that by was 26. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. they they so that knocked Wales out of the competition. And you think, okay, Ireland have got it, but it all comes down to France and England in the last game. And England, in order to beat Ireland's points differential in the table, had to get... Remind me how many points it was. Uh, something like 25, was it 27 was it? as well? 27, something like that, yeah. And like that, yeah. so they were down... They were up by like 25 points. Right. And then we have the last kick of the game that was, you know, two, no, it must have been a penalty or something for three points. And they were at 24. So, I mean, literally people with this last kick, like Mike was saying, <laughs> it would have been enough for England to take the Six Nations. Mm. And uh, somehow they messed it up and yeah. it went to yeah. Ireland. <laughs> And it was so nerve-wracking. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. really, really intense. Yeah. Definitely somebody's going to make a, a documentary about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was an incredible day of rugby. And um, a lot of Irish celebrations. Yeah. You know, we've won. That's two years in a row now that the Irish men have won. Yeah. So, and then I'll have to, to do a US remake and uh, yeah. without the subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so that was the men's game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's not yeah. forget. So yeah. the next day, the women, the women's rugby teams all had their Six Nations. And uh, going into the day, the Irish women's team would have also been potential favorites to win. But they had to beat 
um, who were they playing? Uh, Scotland as well. Oh yeah, it was yeah. of course it was Scotland um, by I think twenty six points as well, and uh, and I had said I have some friends on the team and I texted them the night before just saying, listen, my heart barely could stand the men's game yesterday. Mm-hmm. If you could make it a bit easier on me tomorrow and just completely <laughs> smash <laughs> Scotland, I'd appreciate it. But smash Scotland, they did. They ended up winning, I think seventy three to three. It was yeah, no, yeah. an yeah. annihilation yeah, yeah. of the Scottish women's team. So there was no team that could come close to the uh, the Irish women's points differential. So they won. That's the second time in three years now that the women have won it. So this year, both the men and the women of Ireland mm. brought home the Six Nations trophy. And it was just amazing. I think the, the men's team and the women's team were out celebrating together uh, Monday night. And it sounds like um, everybody's getting a hero's welcome home. It's mm. just been, what a weekend for rugby. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Time. Rugbyists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Sean, tell us about the Flash. What's going on? Something big. Um, so the fl- oh, God. Um, it's very rare that you get to have your cake and eat it too. But in, I in this all case, the time they'd... have cake and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I came Two home. I came home from work tonight and I made chocolate cake and then I ate it. So <laughs> not that That's rare. true. Let me let, let me try and let me try and go again. It's very rare that um, one can travel through time with cake and eat the same cake a number of times. But the second time you eat the cake, because of the time travel, it's now made out of shit and feces, and it runs down your leg. Um, so the Flash, um, not to belabor the metaphor, um, uh, essentially what happened was the Flash had an amazing fucking episode. Um, like, truly, they could have made this a series, not a season, but a series finale last week. And it's the kind of thing, or even like the second last episode ever, and it's the kind of thing that people would have been happy with. And then... This week, they got to do a really interesting thing with time where they showed similar lines and scenes that were, in one context, incredibly sinister um, and sadistic. But in another context, the same words were just completely, like, emotionally humane and lovely. Like, it was just doing the, the best things it can do, you know, like bright colors or very dark ones. This is, and we can paint both of those in such broad strokes with some really good CG uh, they had uh, last week as well. But yeah, I loved it. It was class. Like the Flash is really, it's up in its game as much as it can. And it's got, it's got down to a T something that no other, um, maybe besides Arrow, but no other uh, superhero thing has really managed, which is they don't kill the bad guys. So the same bad guys that everybody likes are going to keep coming back. And they've managed to make that make sense now for a whole group of, like, it's, it's just really good superhero writing. It's good stuff. I saw episode 15, uh, which is Paddy's Day one, was it? Was it? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, so. Yeah, I think so. It was episode 16. Can't remember. It was 15, 15 if you're talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, the, yeah, the second most recent one. Yeah, I saw uh, 15 just the other night, uh, and it was fantastic, have to agree. Um, I sort of went in, mm-hmm. thought, oh, okay, it's another episode of Flash, okay, yeah, probably the same thing again, and it's just like, wow! <laughs> and the end of it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely watching the next one. Uh, yeah, it's, cool. it, was just, it was just great writing. It was just brilliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. Yeah, Sean, I have a question on the physics of superheroes. I believe you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I heard something about Flash during the week, and I couldn't be arsed actually checking out what the Flash thing was. So I just thought to myself, how fast does the Flash actually run? Um, so I did a bit of Googling, and it turned out he had a race with oh. Superman, and he mm-hmm. exceeded the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Yeah. And then I got to thinking, if the Flash's feet, say, maybe weigh one kilo... And they're mm-hmm, hitting the mm-hmm. ground at the speed of light. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm, probably mm-hmm. enough impact to shatter the planet. So would he not be better off flying instead of running? <laughs> I'd, I'd say he runs very softly. <laughs> yeah, he's very light on his feet. Here, he's a bit <laughs> el- el- elvish that kind of way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Mike, if if I could possibly explain the wonders of the, and I'm not joking, this is from the comics, the speed force, <laughs> then I probably would be putting that more into effect in the real world to explain the it speed to you. Force. The speed force. They haven't mentioned it in the show yet because it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> oh, thank you for clearing that okay. up. For me. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I must have skipped over that in physics in high school. <laughs> I'm joking. I never took physics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you missed the chapter on Speed Force. (laughs) (laughs) 
Next up, we'll have some news. So in the news this week, uh, some stuff that I find uh, partly disheartening and other things that I find just really energizing in the way the world works. So Vin Diesel uh, did a big interview about Furious 7, uh, which we're all going to be watching. Um, and he said some stuff in it that, that isn't like controversial, but basically he said some stuff with a complete straight face that some people would laugh about. But, but the, the strength of his conviction and muscles make me wonder if he's actually right. So here's what he said, right? He said, quote, Universal is going to have the biggest movie in history with this movie. It will probably win Best Picture at the Oscars unless the Oscars don't want to be relevant ever. Wow. This will win Best Picture. There is nothing that will ever come close to the power of this thing. End quote. Yeah, but Lindsay Lohan has also said that she wants an Oscar. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I, I completely agree, but I love that he, he not only was like, no, it's going to win one, but he was also like, I mean, if the Oscars don't want to be relevant, then sure, we won't win. Like, so if we don't set up a binary that's, system. That's a mistake. By which... <laughs> Is there an Oscar for, yeah. most, for uh, most delusional? <laughs> oh, just wondering. I, that, that's sad. Here, here's one thing from uh, the Variety article where I took those quotes, though. Apparently, it's going to be the final movie, which I hadn't heard anything about. Did you guys hear about this? It's the last movie ever. I mean, it makes sense given what happened with uh, Paul Walker, but still. It's the last movie ever. <laughs> no more movies. That's it. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, it's as good, if it's as good as Vin Diesel seems to think it is, who knows what will happen. Um, DreamWorks Animation uh, have a movie uh, coming out soon called Home, which is an alien oh, invasion yeah. movie. It's out here. Um, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea if it's I, out. I All I know is here. that people yeah. are worried about it. And really? by people, I mean anyone with any money invested in it ever. Oh. Um, so it basically, and now these are projections, but it's looking like it's going to break even and maybe make a teensy bit of money globally. Like domestically, like it's going to do fine, basically, are the projections. And really, fine isn't fine. You know what I mean? Especially given the fact that three previous movies from DreamWorks, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, which no one will remember, Turbo, which no one should be able to even imagine what that's about, but it's snails who can go fast. And Penguins of Madagascar, all of which lost money. There's not many studios that can just make three movies in a row and just like be like, no, like, sorry. Sorry about all that. Uh, is that sorry, shareholders. Like, is that okay? Like, can we just keep going? Is that fine? I'm a bit worried about it. So they've just kind of started to fire people. Um, basically, <laughs> they've laid off 500 people um, and it's sold an entire campus where presumably they train people. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just something that's happening that I find sad because it's literally people making movies about snails that go really quickly and like, you know, alien invasions, but really the aliens are the ones that are being invaded, you know? And then yeah. being like, I'm sorry, Jim, but your movie about fast snails didn't make millions of dollars. <laughs> you're fired, Jim. I'm sorry, but it's you're fired. Yeah. Pack your things. Yeah. Leave your easel and your computer device. It's a, it's a tough um, industry. Tough industry. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. movie business. Movie business. Um, happy endings are for the movies, not for the movie business. Um, <laughs> an important news item to me. Uh, in particular, given that I'm going to WrestleMania 31 at San Francisco, or nice. SF, as cool people say I should call it that. Um, <laughs> Frisco. So Brock, Brock Lesnar was offered, according to him, 10 times more money than he had ever made before to go back to the UFC. As in, they, whatever they paid him for the UFC before, they said, 10 times more, come back to the UFC. This is what he said, right? Okay. And then he turned it down because he was like, I mean... You know, that I've got to support my family and blah, blah, blah. That's not really the best thing to go get that to shit. I'm, I'm happy working with the WWE where I'm at. Yeah, go and do then, pretend fighting. And, and it yeah. lasts longer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And not have a risk of, you know, literally getting concussions. Well, exactly. not as much of a risk of getting yeah. concussions. So he turned it down and then they offered him double that. What? No way. But on Monday, he, re he signed... <laughs> Uh, on Monday, he, he was at uh, Monday Night Raw uh, for the Go Home show, the show before the pay-per-view. And apparently backstage, he signed. He re-signed with the WWE for a very lucrative deal because it wasn't about the money is what he said. Right. And what's really interesting, right, is I'm going to read you guys a quote that he said. And you can, like, 
figure out if this actually sounds like Brock Lesnar, but I'm going to read a, a quote that he said, and then I'm going to read what he says he's going to do to his opponent at WrestleMania, <laughs> just so you can compare these things, right? So here's what he said uh, when he was talking about the UFC. The fighter in me wants to continue, but at this stage in my life, it ain't just about me anymore. You put your pride to the side. You hug your wife and kids. I'm a 37-year-old man, and some days I feel like I'm 80, just with all the things I've experienced, all the things I've done. I feel fortunate about it. And now cut to Monday Night Raw. Brock Lesnar is going to give his opponent a prison beating, the likes of which he will never recover from. He's going to be carried down on a stretcher. Brock Lesnar is the WWE champion, and he's never giving it back. It doesn't belong to the WWE anymore. It belongs to him. And I just love that there was such a, like a strange lack of balance between those two things. And then, right, here's the thing. The guy saying he's going to give a prison beating to the underdog up-and-comer is the guy getting all the cheers. Because no, nowadays, no. people want someone who's going to murder people for their entertainment. We've come full circle. We're back in Rome, and all roads lead to WrestleMania. Uh, um, that reminds me of uh, yeah. Roy Big Country Nelson fight, oh, yeah. fighting over him the other night. Oh, yeah. And he comes up into the octagon with... Uh, it's a charity t-shirt, and on the back it says, No to Violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, funny, yeah. Um, did you hear Skulder is coming back? Yeah. I did. Our favorite Canadian show. Uh -huh. Woo yeah. yeah, so uh, apparently the original uh, cast members mm -hmm. will be uh, making an appearance, David Duchovny and nice. Jimmy Anderson. Exciting. So, yeah, nice. fantastic. Excellent. Um, I heard I heard six episodes is what they're gonna make of the X Files. It's just six, is it? I, that's what I heard, and I yeah. think that it's it seems like it could even be in response to the fact that they're gonna make more Twin Peaks episodes. Really? Oh, oh I didn't know that. So it'll be a miniserie. My, my whole mm. life is just getting better and better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. Okay. First of our movies is uh, Kill Me Three Times. Sean, tell us about Kill Me Three Times. Kill Me Three Times is a tale of three interconnected murdery type stories, which is really just one convoluted murdery type story, where Charlie Wolf, a hitman played by Simon Pegg, is hired to do various dirty deeds. But who's going to? Be shot the most. Find out on Kill Me Three Times. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we think of this? Shona, I'll go to you first. Um, I hadn't heard of the movie, so I went in with no expectations, which is my favorite way to watch a yeah. movie. Um, okay, so the way that the movie shot, you have, you're kind of thrown into a story. The first murdery thing happens. But then, like, it, it just cuts to black, and then we have Murder Me two times. And you're like, oh, I see what they're going to do. Okay, mm. so now... And then with, you know, the second story, they, they start elaborating on what we see in the first story and get more information. And I thought that was kind of a new approach to, I suppose, um, thickening the plot with, uh, you know, murder. Like, why are you killing people? What are you all trying to do? Um, rather than kind of revealing more and more as the movie goes on, they make it very kind of... You know, here's the general story of what happens, here's some more background, and then here's kind of everything else behind it. So I thought that was new. I think Simon Pegg was born to like born to play uh, this type of character. I've, I, I've never yeah. seen him in something like this before, but it really suited him. <laughs> he seemed like creepy scumbag. He played it really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Uncle Creepy. The yeah. movie had a very indie feel. Is it an indie film? But it couldn't be if it had budget for Simon Pegg. I don't know. Um, based in Australia... The, it was. It's quite strange. Australian. It's quite an Aus it? Australian. You know what I mean? A, a kind of type production, and right. the way it's shot, and the way you know the, I don't know. It's it's the lighting or something. Right. It's very easy to identify. Oh, that's Australian. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was the mostly the Australian accents well, that I gave mean, it away. The <laughs> and, uh, there was nice weather and some beaches, and everyone was dressed casually. That's about as Australian <laughs> as, as it got. Um, so I thought it was interesting. You know, I was kind of rooting for characters, but I didn't care about them a whole lot. Like, I mean, it's not a movie that you get really invested in anybody. It's just kind of like, you know, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Sean. So this is a tactic that is used a, an awful lot nowadays, particularly in pilots. 
Um, so there's a, there's a phrase in media res, which is uh, a narrative technique of relating a story from the midpoint. But seen far more often is whatever the Latin version of in media right at the fucking end. Um, <laughs> like, I even believe that iZombie, you guys were talking about iZombie, didn't that do an, a very similar thing? Like yeah. in media res yep. beginning. And How to Get Away with Murder, that's another pilot like that was just this season again that started at the end of the pilot. Anyway, so I was a bit worried once I saw that because I wanted more, based on the press stuff that I'd read, I read the press packet about this, I was expecting a slightly more clockwork, like dynamic, bits going everywhere kind of a thing, which for me only really started to come into it towards the end, like the proper, like getting ready to finish up. Because for there's a few bits right after the opening scene, which I thought was a great way of introducing a character. There's a few bits right after the opening scene that to me are like obvious. You know what I mean? Like there's a guy and he's he's like I'm Australian. No wait, that's Jason Statham. It's like <laughs> I'm Australian and I'll I'll eat you if you have an affair. That's British. Um, so there's an Australian guy who's scummy, and invariably we realise that he is scummy. And the lady, he doesn't treat his lady very well. And she's like, you are scummy. And he's like, I'm going to kill you. I hope that you're not kissing anybody else. And then she, she gives like a knowing look. And then we go, okay, holy shit. Um, uh, so really what I thought happened was there was a weak middle where it was filling in stuff that we could already have guessed or that didn't really add anything new. Yeah. We were just like, okay, yeah, this needs to be there. That makes sense. And then it started towards the end. It got really oh, okay, the layering effect really started to work with me where I was like, yeah, that's hilarious or that's classic, like that's good stuff. What I did like was their philosophy of violence, which was anybody can be fucking murdered or wounded by fucking anybody, no matter how good of a hitman or how good of a fighter or how big you are. You can get stabbed, motherfucker. You can get stabbed by anyone the in the world, <laughs> which is how the life is. So I liked that. That was weirdly realistic to me. Um, and there were some great Simon Pegg mean jokes. There was like, like he one line where he was in the middle of a bar and he goes, do you uh, know any good bars around here? <laughs> <laughs> like, just like I'm saying this to fuck with you. I'm not even trying to be funny, but I love it. And there was a bunch of like cigarette stuff that I thought was really good as well. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of undecided about where, where this film's going to end. I know that I was ex- not excited. I was, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. And I was engaged most most of everything that happened had me engaged in the movie. Yeah. But I don't know where it's gonna sit so far. I'm not sure. Some if only a scholar, a learned man, could <laughs> deliver to me his opinion in such a manner that I could <laughs> figure out what I felt about it. Speaking of which, Mike <laughs> Tell us. Thank you, Steve. Tell us how to feel, Mike. Yeah. We all feel lukewarm. <laughs> you all just won't understand me anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't really like this movie very much, strangely enough. Um, I thought they, they basically wrote the script, said, oh, this is a really interesting structure. And everybody got excited about that and then forgot about the rest. Um, like Shona in particular picked up about the characters I didn't care about any of the characters Uh, I didn't think they were particularly fleshed out I didn't notice any real big changes in any of them as the story progressed Um, and and when you have the you know the final exposition I didn't really care about the success or failure of anybody in it Um, and I don't think that's the actor's fault it's yeah. just that they, they didn't have enough meat to work with. Yeah. The the only one that came closest to being likable was mm-hmm. the protagonist. The, the boyfriend. Yeah. 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 The, the savior. Guy, the guy dentist. In the, the guy in the pickup truck. No, 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 the savior guy. The, the oh, savior yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type. Yeah, he's uh I mean he was a really nice guy as mm-hmm. far as we knew. <coughs> we didn't know him that well. No. <laughs> you know, so you're right. Uh, what yeah. You, yeah. Um I'm just agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was just Sorry, go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say that they were archetypal, right? Like every single one of them, we only knew in so much as we knew other characters like that. So we put together a composite, like archetypal. That guy is the guy who hits the girl that he's with and then apologizes. We know characters like that. That's the noble guy, the knight Mm -hmm. errant who's going to solve problems. That guy's the guy who only wants money. That's the woman, like the harpy, who's going to be like, ooh, you're a terrible Mm -hmm. husband and I don't like how you're so stupid. Mm -hmm. And then he was the bumbling... (laughs) 
criminal. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. It's like they worked out the structure of the story and they put in placeholders. He said, "We're going to have a bad husband here," <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> they didn't bother finishing it off when they when they got to the the end point. Yeah. Um, other than that, I thought I thought it was shot quite well. Yeah. Um, and I liked the. Uh, I, I did like the violence, I have to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Even as someone that doesn't go for violence, I thought the violence was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the way they were fucking around with time and perspectives and what whatever was kind of Tarantino-ish, and as was the violence, I thought. You know, just a bit, uh, splashy, bloody. Yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go from yeah. zero to one hundred and ten percent instantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, as. Sean said, we've seen a lot of messing around with time and, you know, starting at the end and flashing back yeah. lately. And I think it has been done better um, recently. Um, even like the slap, you know, it's yeah, messing yeah. around with perspectives, but you you get to feel for the characters. And the context. Yeah, yeah. You've, got some, uh, mm. you've got some skin in the game, whereas here <laughs> I, I just didn't care. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it it relied too much on the speed force. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I enjoyed this. I thought it was a real caper. I was about to yeah. say <laughs> it was a real fucking caper. It was, it was an Australian caper. Yeah. You know, as I, I grew to Sean, I was uh, engaged in all all the scenes. There was a bit of a a bit of a slow moment or two in the middle. All right. Um, a bit too talky about stuff that we didn't really need to know about. Um, but for the most part, uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of darkly humorous and mm-hmm. uh, entertaining. Yeah, it's a good dark comedy in that it never took itself too seriously, yeah, exactly. but it wasn't afraid to go there with the violence. Exactly, mm. it's a very easy watch. Um, yeah, it's entertaining and it's funny. You know, uh, Steve, if this beer bottle was made of sugar, it'd smash <laughs> it over your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I had no problems with us uh, apart from the slow bit in the middle, but. Um, I you know, you know, you'll have that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. Um, yeah, I like that. It's it's just not mm-hmm. serious mm-hmm. and and doesn't pretend to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you just reminded me. Actually, the, there's a scene near the end, um, which was kind of interesting, and I thought, oh, that's something I didn't quite expect. And then two minutes later, they just dumped that whole storyline. And I like, yeah. I said they just put that in there to shock people, and then yeah, we've had the shock. Now let's just move on and forget <laughs> that it ever happened. You know, let's go back to doing what the film <laughs> yeah. does. Yeah. Um, Are you confused about that scene? Yeah, I don't know Steve. what you're talking about. The twist. The twist. The oh, twist. I'm gonna have to talk to you after this. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I do. I get you now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, ding, yeah. Ding, Sorry, ding. got okay, you. Yeah. Yeah. Ding, ding. Got it. You yeah. need coffee before you start yeah, yeah. the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need more beer, I think. <laughs> um, so, Sean, have you decided? Which way it's going to go for you? Maybe, maybe go to other people first, Steve. Maybe, maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need a little bit more massaging of my of my critical Shona, muscle. Shona. All right, massage Sh- him. Sh- Sean, I'll, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Sean can massage himself. I'll just give my opinion on the film. Um, I'll give an opinion, uh, Sean, and you can agree or disagree. I thought it was an enjoyable movie. That's all I really have to say about it. I'd recommend it to other people. It was, you know, it's the kind of thing I'd. Yeah, it's a good watch. Nothing that's gonna you know, change the world, but it's a good six. Yeah. It's kind of like a summer movie, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mike? Yeah, it was much too much a caper for my liking. Um, so, <laughs> so if you like capers, <laughs> if you like that cap- what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you like capers, <laughs> add a three to this score. <laughs> um, I, I'll give it a five. It's it's okay, but not my cup of tea. Okay, very good. Sean, how about now? Or do I need to come back to you again? Are you still massaging? No, no, I, I can do it. I'm, I'm fully massured. I think uh, six is a definitely, it's above average. I think that it's a good movie and it's worth a watch. Yeah. Agreed. Six for me as well. Yes, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> Vindicated. <laughs> that's what this comes down to. So that's killing me three times. Okay, so uh, next up we've got the first of our uh, TV, which is the US remake of The Returned, which is uh, called The Returned. <laughs> well, no, it's the re- the original version was called Les Revenants. Uh, mm. Yeah, but it was also named The Return, actually. Well, that was the translation of it, yeah. but I mean, it was not In like the there US, was two was shows as called as The, the Return. Returned. Yeah. Mm. So, so actually, this I'm is just the, being pedantic. This is The <laughs> Returned. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. So, do you want to tell us about it, then, Sure. Yeah. Um, 
I'm sure we've spoken on about the French version mm. of this show, which I will call Les Revenants, just so we'll we don't confuse Revenons, ourselves. By the way. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> which is French for The Returned. Yeah. Um, mm. And it's a show that I saw on Netflix like a year ago. And mm. I know that, Steve, you're a big fan of it. Uh, Mike, I assume you hate it or it's about zombies? And you <laughs> no, like no. I, I love the shit out of that okay. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know we've talked about it before. Um, it's a fantastic TV show. Mm. And I would still even, I would say even see, having seen the American remake now, um, I'd still recommend the French version. I think it's fantastic. Oh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just start with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, okay, so mm. in general, this is a show that has been made in English, uh, based in America, that is remaking the French version of a small, um, beautiful mountain town somewhere in America where people who have died in the town suddenly find themselves uh, awake and going back home and um, not aware that they have died. And so... Oh, and they all died in the one... No. Oh, is this not the case? No, that's not, that's not how the French one worked. Oh, sorry, you're right. Mm. But uh, as far as we know from the pilot. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, <laughs> I think we can assume that, you know, yeah, anyways, yeah. people have died in different ways yes, okay. <laughs> um, in this town. And so in our in our pilot of the American, we follow each episode follows a different character's story, um, a person who is essentially a zombie. But I mean, they don't look like a zombie. They come back and uh, they're of different ages. They've been dead for various amounts of time. But I mean, they have a heartbeat. Uh, they feel normal. They act normal. They go home and they just they don't know what's happened. And so uh, the pilot in America starts with. Um, uh, is it Camille? What do you call them in English? What's the first? I should know this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, the first episode, this girl who goes home and uh, she doesn't know where she's been for the last little while and her, her family is all trying to deal with the shock. Um, and the show in general uh, chronicles these stories of people who kind of become more and more zombie-like. So, I mean, that's where the interest of the show goes, that uh, these people who seem to be very human aren't human and the ways in which they aren't human become more and more prevalent as the season goes on so it's a fantastic show um that uh that's great so i think the american version is obviously just to make it a, you know more widely available in english so yeah which do you guys think the american version a completely pointless scene for scene carbon copy of the french one <laughs> actually except in english <laughs> yeah. except in english um it's true what did i think it captures most of most of what made the original brilliant yes mm -hmm. Um, because it is scene for scene. Yeah, because I, one of the things I was going to say is that like the French, I think the reason why this TV show is so well suited to French cinema yeah. is because the things that I associate with kind of French art and in particular like French music and French film is the amount of space that is given, you know, in, in terms of silence, you know, you yeah. have a town that geographically has a lot of space. It's not a very crowded, busy place. Um, you have characters that aren't always using dialogue to further things. There's a lot of yeah. moody silences. You're, you're not, you're not spoon-fed spoon <clears throat> No, everything. you're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, There's a lot yeah. of just kind of sp Acting. space around, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the physical and the, yeah. the characters that just let things develop. And I think that's really suited to French cinematography. So yeah. the only way that the American version could really... Uh, try to even match the genius of the French as if they did what you said. Like mm. they would have to just capitalize on everything that's so great about the French version. Yeah, um, yeah, they did try that, but I don't think it's quite as atmospheric, which was a big part of the original. And as you said earlier, if you're to recommend it, you'd always recommend the original. And I did that exactly last and week. Someone was telling me that he just yeah. finished watching uh, House of Cards season three. He's like, yeah. so what should I watch now? And I was like, well, I'm watching the American version, yeah. uh, you know, the return this week. Yeah. But watch the French version. It's yeah. much better. Exactly. It's like a, it's the Italian job. Unless watch you're the original. Mark, Don't unless, watch the new unless one, you're you know? Mark and you have issues yeah. with subtitles, in which case that's why they're making you an American <laughs> version. <laughs> I don't think they're going to make as much money from this one. You don't? No, I don't think so. But no. it's a bigger audience. Is it though? I mean, it's I already say. been the states that it was already uh, the highest scoring on Metacritic. Mm. Uh, Late Overnight, uh, you mean? Yeah, in mm. 2013, wasn't it? Mm. That's when it started. So it must have been 2014 or so. Yeah. So um, I obviously the only reason they're the only point to this pointless remake is money. Yeah. Because it's not for the artistic development of the story. No, in it's any it's mean, for making it more widely available. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, like this and like. Uh, What's the Australian 
uh, oh, Sean, you watched it all. The Australian uh, comedy that was remade for the US. Wilfred. 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 Exactly, yeah. So watching the, the original uh, has more of an edge mm. than the US one, uh, which kind of was mm. lost when it was made for mm. the, the US market, I think. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, The Returned, it's The Returned, but just not as good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still very good because it's, it's, still very good. it's yeah, using yeah, a, good, yeah. a really yeah. good template. Yeah. So if you want to <laughs> check emails while watching it, Watch the English version. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, what do you think? I watched this with a a knot of hurt, <laughs> despair, drama, and resentment towards a certain Mark Leonard curdling in my stomach. So what's new this week then <laughs> compared to any other week? Was it anything to do with the TV show you were watching? Or because, just in general? Because he's on record over and over again as saying, like all the foreign shit that we watch, yeah. If it's any good, they'll remake it in English with better looking people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what they yeah. did. <laughs> and he was right. The people are better looking. <laughs> it's scene for scene. It's in English. Yeah. What's not to like? <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> but I even found, like, in terms of their casting, and it's one of the things that really stuck mm. out to me, is that they really... They even tried to, like, they really did take, mm. okay, the person who played this character yeah. looked like this. Yeah. So let's get someone that looks like that, yeah. but mm. better. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, Camille had, a, you know, yeah. the long hair, mm. kind of a slightly clueless, mm-hmm. um, but maybe wise beyond her years, look about her face, mm. big expressive eyes. Mm-hmm. And they got the exact same person yeah. to play that. Mm. And then the guy who plays uh, Simon, or I guess it yeah. would be mm-hmm. Simon in the yeah. American <laughs> version, uh, you know, he's got the same kind of suit on, mm-hmm. shirt unbuttoned at the top, mm. curly, you know, floppy mm-hmm. dark brown hair it's wow. just like wow they've cast the same person yeah. so it, <laughs> but it, better looking in it america means <laughs> after all these years of heartache and talking to mark he's been vindicated oh no so he's don't fucking won <laughs> if you're gonna say it mike don't say it when we're recorded yeah. then mark can tell i say i told you so <laughs> god damn I'm shocked and appalled <laughs> there's a there's only one problem with this version of the show, given that I haven't seen any other version of the show, bear that in mind. Okay? okay, I will be recorded on record, right? This isn't a great pilot at all. It's not. Pray tell it's not a good pilot. So I couldn't tell you, besides maybe one shadowy figure, what anyone wants to do mm-hmm. or wants in general. Mm-hmm. Here's what happens something tragic happens, there's a bus crash. And then for one group of people, the thing that they lost is returned to them their daughter. Right. And yes, um, there is like convoluting circumstances that are interesting to find out about what happened that day or whatever. Sure. But they're done. Like because we haven't seen really that much at all about what's going to be happening next. All I know is that there's some people who are now a lot happier and have something difficult to explain. Like done. Congratulations on this event that happened in your life. That we'll talk about only to each other forever, and no one will ever make a TV show about because there are no complications evident. <laughs> the only complications evident in this are with a minor character, um, who we don't know anything about, but who does some really shady shit in an alleyway. That's cool, but that's 13 seconds. Like I don't know that we get to see. We get to see one relationship implode between some mystic lady, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, are they going to bring magic? No, like, her character's probably never going to be seen ever fucking again. <laughs> so, okay, that's, that interesting thing's gone. That's fine. Well, what about the, uh, what about any of the romances that they have um, going on? Are those interesting? No, nah, like, pretty basic. Um, a, a child died, so then a couple broke up. That's, that's tough. Like, that <laughs> happens all the time. It's really shit. And then what did the guy do? He just found somebody else to, to have sex with, but he's vulnerable, so he got taken advantage of. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I expect. What about the kids? Like, are there interesting kid characters? Well, there's like a teenager who who drinks too much because her sister died. Oh, well, that is obvious. Great. Um, what else? What else do you have? Well, like the teenager or or preteen or whatever who just came back. Turns out, like she, you know, she's a bit confused by the whole thing. You you would be. You would be. Yeah. And then there's this little there's this little like eight year old kid who doesn't know how to fucking act because they've clearly said, could you um could you look sad? Okay, but now smile though. <laughs> Mouth open a little bit so you look like you're trying to do mathematics. Excellent. <laughs> good, good acting. Quotation marks acting. Um, and that was laughable. That was absolutely fucking laughable. Every scene involving that child. I was just like, that's fucking stupid. That wouldn't fucking happen. <laughs> this is a ridiculous relationship that they have. That's fucking stupid. Oh, there's a nosy neighbor. Who gives a fucking shit? 
Maybe she was cast for her looks then, as you suggested. Uh, no, the tiny child is who I'm talking about, the boy with the, oh, okay, the brunette okay, hair. Okay. Victor. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, scary child. Yeah. 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 Oh, scary. Fucking pull out of my arse, scary. That wasn't a scary <laughs> child in any way. That was a kid who was lost and is apparently being abducted by some woman who doesn't know any fucking better. Um, it's, I didn't see this as a good show. I thought it was well shot. I thought that the locations were very pretty. I don't think it was acted by, badly by most people, except that tiny eight-year-old fuck. Um, <laughs> and the, the most interesting part of the whole fucking pilot is when they go, this season, on The Returned. Well, why don't you put some of this season in this fucking episode? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it if this is based around the fact that Camille's episode was a boring, shitty one. Because they did that to us with the slap as well, and I'm not going to watch that show. Like, I literally would only care if the next character up is one I'm interested in, mm -hmm. which is the, the, I guess, I don't know, the blonde guy played by Mark Pellegrino, he, the guy who fucks the mystics. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm just not interested in any of those characters because all I know for now is that their lives just got better and they're going to have a, a lovely day. Hmm. Would you, uh, as for experimental purposes or, or for uh, what do you call it, comparison purposes, watch the first episode of the French one. It's the same length and we don't find out any more of the mystery, do we? I think it's told better. Yeah, that's the thing. Hmm. I don't think you, all your like, arguments for this, or not arguments, but your observations for this uh, episode would stand true with the other. I think, for example, when Camille comes home... Um, the scene, if you were to compare in the English version and the French version, her sister, she and her sister seeing each other for the first time, yeah. they're shot differently and the French is far superior. It's, it's a small thing with how they introduce it, but um, as the viewer, it it connects a lot of dots for you in a kind of creepy like, oh my God, that's what this is about. And for me, when I was watching the French version, it yeah. was one of the things that ended up being a hook for me that the English version, they kind of just like, oh, now there's this, now they're going to talk and oh, like that, yeah. And they they kind of muted what was in the French version, kind of like that, oh, my God, type of moment of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I think yeah. comparing some of the, the what would you call it, the, the, the emotion of the episode or the contrast the or something. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, it was kind of more or less shot for shot in English and French, so there's not a yeah. huge amount of differences. Like, Sean, I think your critiques are probably valid to a point that the pilot isn't going to give you a great taste for what happens in the whole season, um, as pilots are you know, typically meant to do. But it's one of those shows that I guess you could call it a grower because each as as you get to know each character and their story you just begin realizing how fucked up everything is and then things start disintegrating and you're thinking okay I'm in but maybe it does take a bit longer than the first episode I mean I think that's valid I I can I can appreciate a slow roll right and and what ends up happening is people will have um a certain thing that they prefer, whether that's the Hollywood blockbuster style or the network television style or other things, you know, and a lot of times they're just put in a category called indie or whatever. And I generally just think those are differences. But the one thing that you can always say for like a network TV show is here's how every episode of the flash opens, right? Here's what it is. My name is Barry Allen. I am the fastest man alive. And then he goes on to describe how he's going to find the person who killed his mother and get justice for his father. 12 seconds, 12 or 20 seconds, and you know everything you need to know, even if you've never seen an episode before. And that's a difference that I, right now I prefer. Like, if they had had, I don't know what they could have done to make me want more, but I don't know, maybe a, a double-length episode. Like, I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it just didn't get me in the end, so. Sean, if dead kids wandering around a pretty village doesn't get you, you've just got no fucking soul. <laughs> But they have to want to do something. Like, I don't they care did. if they're wandering God damn around. It. They don't Wanderers want anything anymore. They just don't want to that interesting yeah. movie subjects. Put them in a book. They yeah. can have a fucking poem written about them. Well, I, I think what it becomes about, I mean, they just... Because when they first kind of, you know, w wake up or whatever it is that happens to them, because they, they look normal, they act normal, everything is fine, except for that none of them seem to be able to sleep. Mm. But, um... I mean, they their their goal is just to go back to their normal, boring lives. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want for them that that, that doesn't get interrupted. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, zombie life has other plans for mm -hmm. them. <laughs> zombie life's a busy one. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So, Sean... Uh, I didn't... What? 
I was going to say I didn't choose the zombie life. Zombie life chose me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, I assume it's filler? It's a, it's a well-shot filler for me, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Shown it? Um, you know, I probably watch, will watch the American version all the way through just to compare it to the French. Cause I think the French is great, so even if the American is uh, a pale comparison, that's still probably better than a lot of shit on TV. So I'm going to watch more. And it'll give you loads of oh, wait, no, bitching material as well. Uh, so, yeah, if yeah. it's bad, yeah, exactly. I get, <laughs> to, I get to hate watch it like yeah. I did girls. <laughs> hate watch. <laughs> We've got a new, a new phrase coined. <laughs> I like that, yeah, hate watch. Uh, Mike? Well, I, I mean, Are you I, was, I, wa- too? I wasn't sure about it, but <laughs> Sean kind of put it in perspective for me. Hmm. You know, given a choice between this and The Flash, I would watch this every day of the week and <laughs> twice <laughs> on Sundays. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a thriller for me. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to watch any more of this. Uh, You're happy with the French version? I'm more than yeah. happy with the French one, and I don't think this is going to further anything or add anything to it or... Even the slight deviations from the original story, they aren't enough. Uh, to yeah, keep it. So uh, it's a filler for me. So do I guess d- we're split down the middle. Do you know when the French are coming out with next season? Because I really want yes, to see Yes, it's very one. soon, actually. Yeah. Is it? I can't yeah, it wait. Is. Yeah, I think it's in May, uh, if not before. Oh, my yeah. God. That's so... This year is so mm. good for television, people. Mm. I'm just going to say that now. Okay. Mm. Um, except for Jeremy Clarkson, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear uh, Who today? Cares? He's, yeah, uh, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's soon to be back. No yeah, doubt. I'd say he'll with be on Channel a, Four within the week. A bigger <laughs> check in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So next up is the second of our movies, uh, which is the Water Diviner. Um, this is stars Olga Kurylenko, uh, Russell Crowe. Um, Russell Crowe was a uh, father of three sons who went to Gallipoli to fight in World War One against the Turks, obviously, and they didn't come back. They went missing in action. So um, he goes to find them. And it's about his adventures trying to find them, mm. pretty much. So what do we think? Who wants to start? Mike never starts. Mike, start. <laughs> We're going to throw you off the boat I'll first. <coughs> Olga is an extraordinarily pretty woman. She is. She's gorgeous. True. Isn't yeah. She? Mm. Mesmerizing. Um, and she helped lessen the hurt I endured <laughs> while watching this utterly boring movie and wasting two hours of my life. Um, God Almighty! It, it, I, it, I actually felt more exhausted after watching this than I did after watching the Seven Hours of the Six Nations. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> if you're going to make make a war movie, make it about the fucking war. Oh, but it's not. Not about four years yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about this movie is that they didn't just make it about the war. Oh. Um, yeah. See, I saw Gallipoli with yeah. with uh, Mel Gibson. Mm. That was a good fucking movie. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> okay. This is all about emotions and shit. Uh, Which yeah. is a waste of time in your yeah. book. Yeah. Waste of time. <laughs> there, there there's explosions, or at least a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> there is a scene in the movie where a significant character um, exits the movie, and it's a scene of great sadness. <laughs> I was trying. I was actually spitting my coffee out laughing because <laughs> it goes silent so I was filling in the silence myself going no <laughs> it was so monumentally awful <laughs> Mike so you weren't stirred by the emotional manipulation that went on no no the emotional crux of the film uh, uh, no this is uh, this was uh, Russell Crowe's uh, directorial debut really, really? yeah yeah, mm. yeah. I, I just wanted to join in with Mike. I, I watched the trailer for this movie, yeah. and here's the first two things that happened in the movie. There's Russell Crowe, so it goes water diviner trailer. Russell Crowe, he's do, what is he doing? What is he doing? He's looking for water with his water diviners. Mm-hmm. And then he finds water, and it's literally like, you can find water, but you can't even find your sons. 
And I just went, oh my god, how on the nose can you be? Like, why don't you make a movie called, like, Sheet Folder? And be like, you can fold sheets, but you can't fold away your emotions. And I'm like, that's a great comedy idea. Why is, wh who thought this was a good fucking idea? All I did was watch the trailer, and I know everything that happens in the movie, pretty much. And I was like, cool. Good trailer. <laughs> Never gonna watch the film. What, a, what about? Oh, I like that sheet folder. So then you've got mm. Whiplasher, you've got Bird Manor, uh -huh. and uh, Fox mm -hmm. Catcher. Mm -hmm. So you can catch fox a catcher. fox, but you can't. <laughs> you can't catch love. <laughs> and Thing Doer. That was the last one. Yeah. Thing Doer. Mm. And Ship Fighter. Ship Fighter. Oh, well, Ship Fighter. <laughs> um. You know what, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm just going to throw it out there that mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed that emotional ma manipulation. Did you? Yeah, 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 I did, yeah. It caught and, you in the back not, of the throat, did No, you? no, no, I wasn't like... You shed a little, little, little man tear? No, <laughs> that particular scene, I was sort of like, okay, moving mm. on, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, no, the, there were other parts of it, too, that I was just like, yeah, I'm with you, man. <laughs> yeah, I got your back in this, you know. I see what you're doing, you know. <laughs> um... Mm. What do you call it? Uh, yeah, it's got great mm. atmospheric mm -hmm. set pieces mm -hmm. in it, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, the war bits were mm -hmm. pretty good when they were done. They're quite mm -hmm. short, I agree, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. I think we had enough of them. I thought mm -hmm. the Turkish commander, Hussein, mm -hmm. was his name? Was it Hassan? Hassan. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, he just had a great look about mm -hmm. him as yeah. well. Um, uh, and he was complex too. I mean, he wasn't kind he of was, like yeah. bad guy or good guy. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's interesting the way that they paint him and I think yeah. they yeah, made him complex no, and made him likable. Yeah, he he was just a man doing his job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. It, it wasn't a hate-filled mm -hmm. uh, reason. It was just like this is my job and this is why I'm doing it and mm -hmm. you know, no mm -hmm. no bad feelings. Um I like the amusing man boy relationship thing mm. that was going on. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Uh of course the gorgeous uh, Olga mm. Kurlyanko. Good God. Um, and the Hang on, just, uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the interesting Turkish uh, veteran mm -hmm. uh, side of the story, because mm -hmm. it's uh, rare enough that you see that, you know, the mm. that side that isn't the allies. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, certainly in <clears throat> our part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I thought that was great. And uh, it was a great movie, and it was all let down... Just by a few minutes of water divining and <laughs> psychic giftiness. <laughs> it absolutely ruined it for me. I was with him up till that point. Yeah. You know, he goes around dousing mm. for mm. water and other mm. stuff, and I was just like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah. You know, it was so good up till then. It, it was you know, a bit too so much, good. like, it was, and yeah. magic. Yeah, yeah. It was like. <laughs> Yeah, here's the spiritual mm. side of okay. You're gonna have to leave, really leave your brain at the door for this one. But the, yeah, hang on a sec, you've no problem with a girl who eats brains in a morgue and solves murders. <laughs> no, because you're 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 not. It's supposed a suspension to. of disbelief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one I went in prepared. I just yeah, like, yeah. I left the brain at the door. The right premise away. is ridiculous, but, one, but yeah, was it she you know, had better hair. Than this was supposed to be a, a <laughs> this was supposed to be a human story, yeah, this, this and the then thing. all of a sudden it got ridiculous. It was supposed to be like, you know. Like almost based on a true mm -hmm. story or whatever, you know, it, it, it was almost mm -hmm. something that could have happened. And mm -hmm. I thought that's the way it was presented mm -hmm. that this could be a story that could mm -hmm. have happened four years after war. But then, well, even like at the end of the movie, you know, they dedicate it to mm -hmm. all of the unnamed, unfound, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, dead yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was very much based on like this could exactly, be real. Yeah, yeah. And then there's that element to it, and I was just like, ah, bullshit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it. That really mm. ruined it for me, and I couldn't get over it then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After that, so uh, you know, God damn it, it could have been a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I it was pretty solid up till then. Yeah. I have mm. to say, watching this film, I I definitely more or less agree with you, Steve. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed this movie despite myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, also, I didn't know anything about this movie, and I chose not to watch the trailer before going to see it because I thought, um, I just want to kind of surprised myself and i once it started and i was like oh fuck this is going to be a war movie yeah, and yeah, if, it, yeah. if it was anything like the kind of movie that mike wanted to see <laughs> i would have hated it but yeah. i think what's so good about the movie is that it's not about war it's about love it's about a man's mm -hmm. love for his children a man's love for his wife mm -hmm. a man's love for adventure mm -hmm. um so it's kind of I, I liked all these these storylines mm -hmm. now i i do think the 
I mean, I did question while I was watching it, why is this called the water diviner? Because mm-hmm. except for the opening scene where he's divining water, <laughs> <laughs> which is just like, you know, it Dousing. shows yeah, yeah. it shows he you know, digs a hole and then there's water in it. Yeah. And then well his, then his yeah. paper starts. So it's like yeah, yeah. it li- it literally could be any like his, his job. He could have been the mm. thing doer. That's it. Like, yeah, yeah. There you go. The whiplasher. The Water Diviner, despite being the title of the film, really mm. has nothing to do with the movie, mm. except for to make the movie sound a bit mm. kind of like fancy or something. I I think, Shona, what it is is that, you know, in, in this cruel world, and, and we're privileged to not be in a war-torn, desolate landscape, you know, like in this cruel world where parents lose their children and where Husbands and wives get separated from each other by disease and by death. Really, love is the only thing that can nourish us, much like water does. Ooh. So I think that they called it the water diviner because <laughs> they had their thumbs up their assholes and couldn't come up with one that would make more money. So they probably ran the numbers on what would make money or win awards and then went which, to the awards ones. Which job sounds more likely to make you cry when you watch a movie? <laughs> yeah. Imagine um, they call it the milkman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, think they made that one. <laughs> so I think I think the title is terrible and I have an mm. ongoing beef with, with movies in general and their titles because I think there could be a lot more done with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that part was ridiculous. But, um, you know... The, the scenery and kind of the culture that showed of, of uh, Russell Crowe's capers in, mm-hmm. in Turkey, um, you know, was really beautiful. I don't know mm-hmm. a lot about Turkey, so it was kind mm-hmm. of cool to see some mm-hmm. of the like yeah. the tr- traditions and mm-hmm. there's some jokes about food, you know, when he's going mm-hmm. to a, a B&B for breakfast and he gets a breakfast and, you know, he's... It's not what it, what he's looking mm-hmm. for. You know, oh, there's some the interesting stuff there. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's some <clears throat> Turkish dancing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that stuff was cool to see. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten how good an actor Russell Crowe can yeah. be mm-hmm. you know I'm mm-hmm. in, in my head I had written him off as being a kind of ridiculous guy because of his um you know the, his personal reasons for making headlines um oh, or a bit pe- Mel Gibson-y yeah, 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 yeah or yeah. people making Definitely. fun of his singing in Les Miserables so mm-hmm. I had forgotten that actually he can be quite captivating as an mm-hmm. on-screen presence like I kind of when I heard that he was starring in this film, I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck Russell Crowe. Mm-hmm. But um, <sighs> even watching him act and trying to be like, you hate him, you hate... Mm-hmm. I was like, actually, you know, he's pretty good. Like, he's yeah, a likable yeah, yeah. man. With, you know, he's got very <clears throat> soulful eyes. Mm-hmm. He wants to turn on the puppy dog face. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like the fact that this movie was a lot more... About a lot more than war. The war stuff mm-hmm. I, I didn't like so much because mm-hmm. I, I never really do. I found it hard to watch. And the scene that you're talking about, Mike... That has you laughing? I knew, I knew, yeah. obviously, that this. That this <laughs> stop it! I knew that this movie um, was going to pull at heartstrings, yeah. and I am a sucker for that kind of thing. Yeah, you like, were crying, weren't I you? Have, I have a reputation for seeing films that are even mildly emotional, distressing, and me being scarred for. I, I, I left the time traveler's wife and sat in the car park of the cinema and cried for an hour in my car before I could drive. <laughs> like I knew I knew what they were going to be doing and yeah, I got yeah. to that scene as so I watched the whole movie mm. being like enjoying the movie and kind of finding myself mm. pleasantly mm. surprised but being like you know it's coming mm. just be yeah, yeah. cool yeah, yeah. just kill the part of you that's maybe a bit emotional right yeah. now and a little bit hormonal <laughs> and that scene came and it broke my goddamn heart in half <laughs> And I was trying to keep it in, but then it was just like my husband looks over at me, and I'm just like, ah. it, was, oh, it was the saddest goddamn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was pretty it was pretty bad, wasn't it? No, yeah, I yeah. wasn't laughing. It no, 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 was it was pretty bad. I know, yeah. It was really oh. sad. But I, I, Sh- I, Shona, we were definitely <laughs> separated at birth. You know? <laughs> um. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, one of the, the best lines in it. Uh, and it sort of, it, it wasn't sort of explored before he gave the line, but I thought it was great. It was uh, Is it going to be, you can find general... water, but you can't find your sons? No. It, <laughs> no, that was a good line, but it was, but he's the only father that came. <laughs> Did you see that one? I don't Where remember he, that. He, he comes out, he I goes to Gallipoli. The trailer, actually, comes, they, yeah, he comes out to the beach. Trailer. You know, and then they're telling him to feck off, he can't be here. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the, yeah. The, the Turkish general is like, uh, yeah, but he's the only one that came. You know, there are loads of people have dead sons and so on. Yeah, but he's the only one. 
He came all the way the fucking way from Australia, for fuck's sake. Give him five minutes. You know? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the um, yeah, the the emotional intensity of the movie did end up getting to me. I cracked yeah. despite my best efforts at being uh, stony faced. But then the end of the movie uh was was good, but also ruined it for me. There was kind of some moments where I think it takes you out a bit of of the story and makes you think like, uh, that seems unlikely. And it doesn't, I don't know if the, um, sometimes I think movies do unlikely things, but it's for the benefit of giving you what you want and it satisfies something in you. But um, I didn't see, yeah, I don't know. The story was good. Mel, um, I was gonna say Mel Gibson. <laughs> Russell Crowe was uh, was better than I expected, but then um, I was let down towards the end of the film. So, um, but having said that, I, I enjoyed the film. I yeah. I, I liked it. So it's worth a watch. Despite the letdown, what do you give it? I thought about that, and um, I, I was thinking somewhere between a six and a seven. I know mm. I can't give half points. Um, it certainly wouldn't get any better than a seven. I thought, well, what would I would I give it a seven? But I think when it comes down to it, it was uh, it was an enjoyable film. I think it's better than average, but I'm going to give it a six. Yeah, I'm much on the six. Yeah, it was great. It was, it's it's a good movie. It's very well made, but yeah, there's just some bits I just couldn't yeah. get over because yeah. they tricked me. Damn it, <laughs> <laughs> Mike. This is appalling. Um, <laughs> I I really like Russell Crowe. Like, from Romper Stomper to Beautiful Mind to Gladiator, even fucking Noah. I liked Noah. <laughs> wow, you're a big fan of Russell Crowe, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this okay. is awful. Uh, I'm going to give it three. Wow. Three? Yeah. What did you give Noah? Eight. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> says it all there, folks. You know, this won uh, three Australian Academy Awards, mm. which is kind of like not winning any Academy Awards. <laughs> <laughs> like a w- winning an IFTA. <laughs> you know um, they're splitting the IFTAs now. There's going to be an IFTA TV and an IFTA film. Oh, is there? Yeah, so they'll have two nights. That's oh, Irish film and television <laughs> awards, people. God. Um, okay. So next up we'll have some previews and come to a bicycle near you. Okay, so the first one we saw was uh, Mission Impossible 5. Tom Cruise. Yeah, looks like uh, an impossible mission. It does. The fifth. Mm. One, the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. A fifth impossible mission. Yeah. There's never been one I haven't liked. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I have yeah. to watch this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're great. It's just when you hear the fucking music. It's a caper, you know. <laughs> it's not a caper. It it's so much more it. than a caper. <laughs> it's so much more than a caper. <laughs> Um, yeah, this this looks uh, yeah. as exciting as mm. um, as big budget as I thought it might be, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, lots of yeah. escapes from. Do you think Anth- places Do you think Anthony's and... going to blow up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and I think Tom Cruise <laughs> is another one who, like mm. in recent years, his reputation has damned him, and you kind of mm. go in thinking like, I want to hate him, but he's mm. so good in these types of yeah, roles, especially yeah, yeah, Mission yeah, Impossible. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's really good. Yeah. I think the trailer does a great job. Like it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, Tom Cruise <laughs> beat people <laughs> up and do mom. stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Complain about that. So, Mission Impossible is always good if you like it. If that's your kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. this it, looks like it's another. It looks like good a good one. Good Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's pretty like much like the Bond series now. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Them, you know? If exactly. you're into it, you're yeah, yeah. sold. You're, you're yeah. Going. Watch, gonna watch the trailer, yeah, guys. It looks good. Well, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Maggie, what do you think of this? This is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has mm-hmm. uh, got uh, daughters infected with something. Abigail Breslin. Mm-hmm. Abigail Spencer. Breslin. 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 Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of yeah, someone else. Yeah. Um, who? Um, uh, Abigail Spencer was the she girl like... in Hannibal. Uh, yeah, she was in Suits, wasn't it? No, no, she was one of the victims in Hannibal. Abigail. She oh, was the girl yeah. from. <laughs> anyways. Yeah. Um, so. She looks like she gets infected by the zombie virus, is yeah. what I understand. And it's like, once mm-hmm. she gets so bad and violent and mm-hmm. her eyes uh, cloud mm-hmm. over and stuff, uh, bring her to mm-hmm. quarantine. And Arnie's like, mm-hmm. but I promised her mother that I would protect her. <laughs> yeah. And so he picks up a gun. And mm-hmm. actually, you know, this is the first movie that I remember seeing in which Arnold Schwarzenegger is actually vulnerable. Mm. Yeah, and he is not the mm. big muscly man throwing mm-hmm. people around the place. Well, the thing is, because like, he finds place. his daughter, like in the trailer, mm. he finds his daughter in a hospital. I think mm-hmm. she had been trying to run away from him, so she didn't. He didn't mm. have to deal with her mm. like this. Yeah. 
But um, he decides to take her home with the mm. warning from the doctors mm. that, you know, once she becomes mm. too zombified, you mm. need to bring her back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay. But mm. obviously, because why is there a movie mm. otherwise, she escapes from his care. So the trailer is showing him hunting her. Mm-hmm. But like, is he going to have to kill her out of love? What's going to happen? Yeah. I think the trailer looks mm. so exciting. But you could see Ernie actually showing yeah, emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he's torn as a father. Like, I love her enough. Do I have to kill her for her own good? Yeah, yeah. Is there a way I can save her? Like, imagine, you know, I, I know it takes a certain suspension of disbelief because, mm. you know, there's no such thing as a zombie virus yeah. we, that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> or an Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, imagine your daughter gets really sick like that and it comes down to, like, how do I protect her if it also means having mm. to kill her? It just yeah. looks really good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon, Mike? This one worried me a lot because I, I thought, like, if there is a zombie outbreak, mm-hmm. I want Arnold Schwarzenegger on the front line fucking wiping those motherfuckers out. <laughs> Not going after his daughter. <laughs> He's wasting time <laughs> when valid survivors could be getting underground. What you need is Brock Lesnar, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's why the plan for zombie apocalypse is that we all come here to the Is the Bicycle <laughs> yeah, yeah. Studio headquarters <laughs> we, because I'm, Mike is going to be the voice of reason yeah, <laughs> while I'm drinking myself to death in a cellar. <laughs> I'm because he's tooled up here. Right? <laughs> Aldi's finest uh, yeah. chainsaws. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, they got some very good value drills this week, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're agreed. We're watching this. Yeah? I can't yeah, okay. wait for yeah, this. Wait. Damn right. When is it coming out? Do you know? Uh, Not soon. 2015 enough. is all I know. Do you think Halloween? Mm. Maybe. Oh, this sounds like a summer movie. It does. Actually, okay, doesn't it? I look yeah. forward to it. So does this Mission Impossible Five. Mm-hmm. Mission Impossible Five. I am putting my fiver. Five. I'm putting my five euros down on July seventeenth. Why is that one? Just let us into the secret, Mike. Because you looked it up on IMDb. No, no, I, it, it, it's got a fe- I was out there dousing today with no. my divining <laughs> rod. <laughs> I just got a feeling. Yeah, someone spoke to you, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last one looked I up couldn't up. find my son, though. <laughs> <laughs> the last one we looked at was uh, Self Slash Less, mm. which is uh, Ben Kingsley and... Mm. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a sci-fi um, dystopia, dystopian future type mm. thing, um, where uh, someone gets his face off. Mm. Well, and you he get swaps brains. you get it's rich enough, and brains. you can start um, inhabiting a younger, healthier, empty yeah. vessel mm. of a body, which ends yeah. up being Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. But then we see he starts having flashbacks <coughs> of Ryan Reynolds' mm. and then uh, don't characters. Know who's that's mm. it. Is it the man with two brains? Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. This looks also good. looks good. Looks good. This is despite yeah. me shitting on it. This is exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. this is exactly up my street. So yeah, I will yeah. be watching this eagerly. Yeah. There's actually been some really good sci-fi short stories written on this kind of mm-hmm. thing. Orson Scott Card, who we would know from mm-hmm. Ender's Game, mm-hmm. wrote a short story. I think it was called Racist that. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's homophobic, I think, and bigoted. I don't know if he's racist though. No, he's mostly. Oh bigoted. no, he is because there was some Barack Obama. Allegedly. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. uh, Orson Scott Card, who's completely discredited himself as someone that we should look up to, uh, wrote a short story, I think, called Fat Farm, about somebody who does this. They have enough money, and then they can start kind of building themselves new bodies. Yeah. And what happens to the inhabitants mm-hmm. of the old bodies? So, it's kind of a it's a theme mm-hmm. that you'd see in science fiction. Mm-hmm. So, it looks like it's a good mm-hmm. movie. It, it obviously works because we mm-hmm. see this crop up, this type mm-hmm. of story crop up a lot. Sci-fi. I'd have thought if they had that kind of technology that they'd actually just take out one brain and put mm-hmm. the other one in. Surely they'd have brain transplant. You, that you no. wouldn't have to mm. get the different body mm. that you could just look like you no. but with a new... It's much easier to wipe a hard drive and image well, Obviously not ones. according to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you have residual issues, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if we wanted to have like an engineer's analysis yeah, yeah. of a science yeah. fiction concept, yeah. that's the podcast we'd tune into. You didn't think it was going to be a smooth ride, did you? Mind? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I wouldn't have a job otherwise. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> true story. But uh, the best thing about this movie actually is there's no fucking artificial intelligence in it. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is a unix system either. You know? yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah. all good. We'll watch. We'll watch. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and um, that it for this week. Think so. Yes, I think it is. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. so tweet us at is it a bicycle or uh, email uh, podcast at is it a bicycle dot com uh, with any abuse from Mike. <laughs> so from <laughs> Mike, uh, Sean, Steve, and Shona, stay classy. <laughs>